Just come from a first year anatomy revision session. Because uh, they've got exams coming up next week. I know, I know it doesn't sound like a good time of year, but it is, it's a good time of year. It's so good to see them, they're all talking, they're discussing things with each other, they're teaching each other, they're answering questions. They know stuff and they've worked really hard to get there. Really, really nice to see as a teacher. Oh, it'd be really nice to mark their exam papers as well in a couple of weeks' time. Anyway, we are here to talk about the anatomy of the endocrine system. It's another one of those systems um, that's absolutely vital for life. It's really, really important, you know, because it's involved in controlling basic functions of the body. But anatomically, what do you point to? So if we're going to talk about the anatomy of the endocrine system, I think I'm going to start at the top. I might miss them out here. Pineal gland, hypothalamus, pituitary, thyroid, parathyroid, pancreas, gastrointestinal tract as a whole, adrenal glands, kidneys, gonads. That's a lot. So I'm going to have to be brief. And this is an anatomical look at things, not a physiological look at things. But I'll mention the hormones and where they are as we go, right? And then I've probably got other videos in more detail about each organ if you want to know more. Right, so what are we talking about with the endocrine system? The endocrine system is a method of signaling from one group of cells to another group of cells across the body. The signals are hormones, the hormones travel in the blood, and this is, you know, relatively speaking, a slow thing. Why don't you just use nerves, I hear you say. Nerves are a really quick way of controlling things. Well, hormones are a different way of regulating other cells. Um, the cells that respond to the hormone have got to have a receptor for that hormone, and this is kind of like a slower, longer lasting signaling thing, communication thing than maybe what nerves do. And anyway, it's evolution, so it's messy. What are you gonna do? These endocrine organs seem to have um, arisen, you know, individually, separately, producing various hormones that do various jobs, and we find that there are some endocrine organs up here that control other endocrine organs. So you might hear of axes, like the HP something axis, like the HPO axis, the hypothalamus, pituitary, ovarian axis, and things like that. Well, let me clear up the anatomy for you so you know what those words mean, all right? Um, let's get some organs. I just thought we'd start at the top because that keeps us organized. But also if we start at the top, we get some of those controller endocrine organs. Out you come, brain. Um, and within the brain, we see a couple of things. Um, well, kind of. So back here, we find an organ. Um, we could find the pineal gland. Pineal, it's like pine cone shaped. So the pineal gland is within the brain. The pineal gland is involved in recognizing the change in the length of day, certainly in little furry mammals, certainly, and in a lot of vertebrates generally. Um, and it adapts the wake sleep cycle and probably other things to the changing seasons of the year. It also is involved in the circadian rhythms of our wake sleep cycle. It makes melatonin. This is why. This is the organ that you're tweaking when you take melatonin when you fly across time zones to try to trick your body into sleeping when you want it to sleep. So the pineal glands up here, it's kind of interesting for that. But the lump next to it is the thalamus. And this part of the brain down here is called the hypothalamus because it's below the thalamus. Now the hypothalamus is a really interesting part of the endocrine system. This part of the brain controls other endocrine organs, often via the pituitary gland, which is nearby and we'll have a look at in a moment. Um, now the, the neurons in here, the cells in here make vasopressin which is also known as antidiuretic hormone, or ADH, and they make oxytocin, but we'll see that those are actually released in the pituitary gland. 
but they also make a lot of um, hormones that control other hormones. So we've got like growth hormone, releasing hormone, and growth hormone, inhibiting hormone. We've got corticotropin, releasing hormone, and thyrotropin, releasing hormone, gonadotropin, releasing hormone. And we'll see what those mean as we go down, right? So this region of the brain is regulating appetite, it's regulating body temperature, it's regulating like sleep cycles, it's involved in memory. The hypothalamus is a part of the brain and it is an endocrine organ, an endocrine structure there. Now, because I've taken this out of the cranial cavity, the pituitary gland would be hanging down from here, but it's gone, it's still in the cranial cavity. So let me get a different model to show you the pituitary gland. Half head, so mid-sagittal section. There's the hypothalamus there that I was talking about. This here is the pituitary gland. There's the sphenoid sinus, there's the pituitary gland there, sat in the bone there. And the pituitary gland is directly connected to the hypothalamus. There's a little stalk it's directly connected by blood vessels and it's directly connected by the axons of neurons. So as I said, the hypothalamus releases oxytocin and vasopressin into the pituitary gland. Now the pituitary gland has got this lovely um, little capillary network and I said that hormones are passed into the blood, pass around the body in the blood and then act on other cells at a distance. So the hormones are released into the blood, off they go, hit their other targets. So these are very much controller or regulator organs, reg endocrine organs of other tissues around the body. So vasopressin will um, act on the kidneys to regulate uh, water loss and blood pressure and you know that sort of thing. Oxytocin is involved in childbirth, lactation, social bonding. I think it gets called the cuddle hormone. So oxytocin is coming from that hypothalamus pituitary link. Now the anterior cells of the pituitary gland also make hormones. They will make growth hormone. Guess what that does? They will make adrenocorticotropin hormone, which will act on the cortex of the adrenal glands. We'll come back to that later. They release follicle-stimulating hormone. That's acting on the follicles in the ovary. It releases luteinizing hormone, which will act on the female reproductive system. It'll act on uh, the male and the female gonads. Um, it releases thyroid-stimulating hormone. Guess what that stimulates? Uh, and it'll release uh, prolactin, which is going to initiate um, milk production by the mammary glands, right? So, I've listed a number of hormones there that are going to act on other endocrine organs. Anatomically, look where it is. Nasal cavity, oral cavity. If, and there's a lot of brain up here, if somebody had a tumour here, how might you choose to access that surgically? Would you go that away, or would you go that away? So hypothalamus pituitary, and we've done the pineal. Let's work our way down to the thyroid gland. The thyroid gland is here. So here's the, the laryngeal prominence, and we're going down a little way, and then we're at the trachea down here, the thyroid gland is wrapping around the trachea on the left and right sides. There's a central isthmus here. The thyroid gland is involved in regulating metabolic rate, regulating protein synthesis in cells throughout the body, which means it also has effects on growth and temperature and energy use and things like that. It also, uh, the, those hormones are thyroxine and triiodothyronine, T4 and T3. Um, it also produces calcitonin, another hormone that decreases blood calcium, the amount of calcium in the blood. This is interesting because if I was able to peel back the thyroid gland, I'd find four little brown kind of P-shaped organs posterior to the thyroid gland called the parathyroid glands. The parathyroid glands make parathyroid hormone which increases blood calcium. So those two work together to keep just the right amount of calcium in our blood. You need to have the right amounts of, you know, 
glucose and minerals and salts in your blood so the cells throughout your body work as they're supposed to work. So all these things work together, they're all crucial. So thyroid and parathyroid. Okay, I'm gonna have to take some organs out. Here's the liver, take that out. Take the stomach out. And now we can see the pancreas. If I take that, the greater momentum off, just so you can see. There's the small bowel, there's the transverse colon. But this here, there's the spleen. This is the, the pancreas. If I take off the transverse colon, we can see it a little bit better. The pancreas is an exocrine and endocrine organ. So it's ex an exocrine secretion means you're secreting onto an external surface. And the gut tube is an external surface inside us. It has external things going through it, right? So the exocrine secretions are helping with digestion. Now, the, there are patches of cells in the pancreas called the islets of Langerhans. Kind of one of those things you, you learn early on and then sticks with you. Anyway, islets of Langerhans, and those groups of cells are producing hormones. Those are endocrine cells. So the endocrine secretions of the pancreas are quite well known. Insulin and glucagon regulate um, blood glucose levels by affecting the other cells in the body, like glucose uptake by those cells and release from stores and that sort of thing. Um, somatostatin is also made by cells here. So somatostatin will kind of switch off the pancreas. It'll dial down those endocrine and exocrine secretions. Somatostatin is quite interesting because it's actually produced by other endocrine organs in the body as well, including the hypothalamus. And then it also makes pancreatic polypeptide, which um, again has a role in regulating the pancreas itself. So insulin and glucagon are the most interesting hormones here. So the pancreas is important, as you know, um, you probably knew, right? Now, the rest of the gastrointestinal tract, well, it's also re regulated by hormones. That was the point I was trying to make. Um, uh, there's an, what we call an enteric nervous system. So the gastrointestinal tract kind of has its own little mini brain, regulates itself nervously, and it also has its own little endocrine system, which sometimes gets called the enteric endocrine system. So it is also regulating the activity of cells in the gastrointestinal tract using hormones. You might have heard of some of those hormones like ghrelin um, and cholecystokinin, and gastrin and things like that. So again, the, gastrin, the cells within the gastrointestinal tract also have some endocrine function, some signaling to one another using hormones, which is really important in things like appetite regulation, right? You're switching on and off the, the GI tract. Uh, hmm. Ah, right. We can just see the next candidates peeking out from behind. If I take off the gastrointestinal tract, and we look at the posterior abdominal wall, we've got these little, little organs here, which are absolutely crucial to life. These organs sit upon the kidneys. Stuff associated with the kidneys gets called renal. So these organs are known as the suprarenal glands, because they are superior to the kidneys, or the adrenal glands, because they sit on top of the kidneys. Um, they have a medulla in the middle, and they have a cortex around the outside, which do quite different jobs. The cells in the medulla make adrenaline and noradrenaline. That is the site of your fight or flight response. That is where that adrenaline dump comes from. That adrenaline and noradrenaline can be released into the blood, swirls around the body, switches on loads of things, gets you ready to survive some difficult or dangerous encounter. Um, whereas the cells in the cortex around the outside make um, steroid hormones, cortisol, the stress hormone, um, aldosterone, um, they're involved in synthesis of estrogens and uh, testosterone in both men and women, right? So these little organs are producing hormones that uh, make glucose available from stores. They make sure your cells of your body have got energy. They, they're involved in making sure the, the salt concentrations in the blood are as they should be. They're regulated because all the cells in the body need a certain salt concentration, right? Um, they're involved in regulating blood pressure. 
all these little tasks that are crucial for all of the cells in your body to function, and these cells are involved with that. So do you remember that the hypothalamus was going to trigger the pituitary to release adrenocorticotropin hormone, which sounds like a very long word, but adrenocortex tropin, so switching on production of hormones from the adrenal cortex to switch on other things. So the hypothalamus is regulating the pituitary, is regulating the adrenal glands, is regulating other things, and we have various positive and negative feedback loops. So that's the sort of thing we see with the adrenal, uh, with the um, endocrine system. Now the kidneys as well, they make hormones, so they, they get involved. Um, uh, they make erythropoietin, little bit of a dirty word in uh, professional cycling. EPO, erythropoietin, uh, signals the cells in the bone marrow to make more red blood cells when your blood needs to carry more oxygen. They make uh, calcitriol, which is like the end of the vitamin D synthesis pathway, which then triggers your gut to absorb more calcium. These are very long pathways sometimes. Um, and they make renin. So there's the renin, uh, aldosterone, angiotensin. So again, renin is made by the, um, the kidneys and it's involved in regulating blood pressure. There are hormones that affect cells that make other signals, that affect cells that make other signals. It gets very complicated, but it's working all the time. And when it stops working, there's a problem. All right, so we're down to the level of the kidneys. If we get down any further, we get down to the gonads, which this person doesn't have. Okay, different model then. Here we go, this one's a bit easier to remember. Uh, the testes are endocrine organs. They make testosterone. <laughs> which is important in developing male secondary sexual characteristics and uh, continuing male secondary sexual characteristics and functions through life. So testosterone. The testes also make oestrogen. Did you know that? And there are different forms of oestrogen. So men have oestrogen and women also have testosterone, just different levels, right? Um, and there are other hormones made in here, inhibins and activins, and the hormones that tend to be involved in locally uh, managing uh, spermatogenesis, the production of new spermatozoa. What about the ovaries? Okay, uh, there's the ovary in there. Do you see where we are there? So, um, pelvis, kind of lateral wall there. The ovary, the cells in the ovary make estrogens and progesterone, which are important in developing female secondary sexual characteristics and fertility and maintenance of fertility in uh, the menstrual cycle, maintaining the endometrium in case a fertilized blastocyst is there and can implant and fertility, really, yeah, really important fertility stuff. So very, very important endocrine organs down here. And do you remember how I said that the pituitary gland releases luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone? Well, those are having effects on the cells in the ovary um, to trigger ovulation and are involved in regulating the menstrual cycle. So the hypothalamic pituitary ovarian axis, that's the control sequence. What do you reckon? How was that? So that's the endocrine system. The organs of the endocrine system, they are spread about the body from top to bottom. We saw the pineal gland, hypothalamus, pituitary. We talked about how those organize the actions of the other organs. We saw the thyroid, parathyroid, uh, pancreas, talked about the gastrointestinal tract, adrenal glands, kidneys, gonads. And there are cells spread around the body and they can signal to one another using hormones that they pass into the blood, which will then bind to other cells if they have a receptor for that hormone and trigger response in some way. That's the endocrine system. So. Like the immune system, it's kind of difficult to point at the anatomy of the endocrine system. But hopefully you've got an idea now. Uh, when you're learning about the endocrine system, the physiology, you've got physical structures to anchor those ideas and that knowledge to. And of course there's more anatomy. If you want more, um, there is more. <laughs> to a search, you'll find it. Uh, see you next week.